All right, good morning, good evening, and good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Hello, everyone. I'm so happy that you are here today. Uh, here, we're gonna get started with uh, Yulin from NKN. We have Yulin and Bruce from NKN. Uh, we're gonna be start getting started in just a moment, but before I get started, I just wanted to real quickly uh, let you know that this session is being recorded, and so this recording will be available on our YouTube channel. Uh, I will drop the link in the chat so that you know where you can find it there. Um, also, if you wanna just take a moment to say where you're watching from and say hi, that would be great. I am so grateful that you all are here. Um, yeah, and with that, I'm gonna go ahead and hand it over to both Yulin and, and to Bruce and you guys can uh, get started. Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Elon Elon Zhang. So I'm the co-founder and the CTO of NKN. So um, today I'm going to give you like um, uh, over technical overview and uh, of like uh, NKN SDK and uh, uh, a quick start guide and some of the tips that we have um, be, being like working uh, uh, and also some like samples or like um, sample apps that uh, community made. That should be a uh, good examples for you to get started. So let me share my screen. Let's see. So Bruce, can you see my screen, the presentation screen? Uh, yes. Okay. Good. So let's get started. So um, uh, in short, what NKN does is providing a decentralized network um, for like uh, any uh, centralized or decentralized applications. So if you think of uh, most of other like blockchain projects you have heard, there are some of uh, some of them doing like providing uh, decentralized storage such as Filecoin. Some of them are providing like decentralized compute. So similarly, what NKN provides is kind of like decentralized network through the proof of relay. So note in the net, uh, NKN network uh, actually relay the data for like client or for for, for the yeah for client and uh, the, uh, get the chance of earning mining reward. So that enables the users to uh, to to uh, like to transmit data from point to point, and sometimes without any charge. So currently, um, like Lincoln is already the largest blockchain network in the world in terms of the uh, like uh, consensus node count. So currently, there are about a hundred thousand uh, full Lincoln nodes in the network, and they are all like. Uh, consensus node and also relay node means that they are running like a full copy of the blockchain relaying data participating in consensus um, and the reaching a, a, like agreement on what the ledger should be. So we actually can do this because we have a novel consensus algorithm called MOCA, majority vote seller automata. It's based on uh, stable Warframe's new kind of science, but we will, it's actually how we got our name, new kind of scientific. Uh, we will probably not go in through um, this consensus detail because it's not that relevant to uh, like uh, developers um, who use NKN to receive and send data, but just to let you know. And you can see that our node count increased pretty rapidly in this year, uh, starting from like 30,000 in March to uh, like 100,000 in, in, in um, April. Our next mile, milestone would be like over a million nodes. Our consensus algorithm actually um, guarantees that no matter how many nodes are there in the network, they can, they can reach consensus pretty efficiently in, within just seconds. And that, that means we just need to think of a way to uh, make NKN like uh, adopted by more miners, more users, and don't need to worry about the scalability issue. So just in case, you missed yesterday's overview. Um, so uh, NKM, this is kind of like um, a, a brief, intro, a brief uh, like highlights of uh, what NK Network is like. So basically NK Network provides a real-time peer-to-peer communication by real-time actually uh, are talking about like hundreds of milliseconds latency. And all the data are transmitted off-chain, so none of them are going, going 
uh, going to the blockchain history or anything because that's kind of uh, no way near like real time and uh, scalable. And uh, those data are transmitted through like a hundred thousand nodes, which are decentralized relayers. NKN uses something called NKN address, which is like a permanent address. It only depends on your public key and it's kind of agnostic to network. Uh, so no matter where you are in the world, as long as you doesn't change, you don't change your like public key and identifier, uh, then it has the same, it will have the same address in the NKN network and it will always be able to receive and send the data in the same address. And also there is no need for like public IP address or like port forwarding or network or like net traversal or those kind of nightmare that you typically will deal with when you uh, will do peer to peer communication. Using NKN SDK, everything is pretty simple. You just embed SDK in your uh, application and uh, that's it. There's like, you don't need to worry about anything about like network, uh, uh, network uh, part and it just works. And the latency of end-to-end -end communication is, uh, is typically like hundreds of milliseconds level latency uh, level. And also there's like a better version, like a lower latency and higher throughput version if you pay like um, NKN token. And, and also the throughput is typically on the like megabytes per second level, like several megabytes per second. But if for the paid mode, it's kind of can be like 10 times more or even higher. All the data are end-to-end -end encrypted in NKN network because we use public key for routing. So before we send the data, you already know recipient public key. So it's very easy to do end-to-end -end encryption without any centralized of, like uh, authority. And as you may see, uh, you will see in a moment, there's no requirement for blockchain knowledge or token if you just want to send and receive data using NKN client. Everything is really like simple. It just starts. Uh, within a few lines of code. So we provide uh, a couple like ready to use SDK um, for, for, you, uh, for developers to use. So we have the official one made by the team, uh, the, the JavaScript SDK and the Golang SDK. So the JavaScript SDK, uh, if you're using TypeScript, you may notice that there were like, uh, uh, sorry, let me show you. And there was a issue raised by um, uh, hackers and participants lead that yesterday about TypeScript declaration. So if you if you use TypeScript, you can probably take a look at this issue and the TypeScript declaration that they provide. It's kind of very helpful if you're using uh, like TypeScript because currently uh, our JavaScript like SDK was kind of lack of um, TypeScript declaration and. If you so, we also you we also have official Golang SDK, and it can also be used on iOS and and Android if you use Go Mobile to compile it to iOS and Android library. There are also a couple of like community SDK, um, uh, such as the Java SDK, the C Sharp, the Flutter. The Flutter one is actually just a wrap of the Golang SDK after Go Mobile uh, compilation, and a working. Uh, like a C++ SDK, uh, which is working in process, uh, in progress. You will probably start, you, you can use it soon, but not now. And for this hackathon, I actually recommend you to use official SDK if possible, because that has the best documentation and official support. For the community used SDK, you can also use um, it, like if you're interested, but because it's made by the community, there might be like less support uh, provided by the team. So um, a basic uh, like concept for the NKN SDK is we call the NKN client. So an NKN client is a, a client that is used to send and uh, receive data in the NKN network. Uh, so all the data are transmitted off chain. So this is, there's like nothing related to on chain uh, data transmission. So the basic uh, like, uh, a, per, a, a basic step to, to use a client is that basically you create a client. And if you want to, sorry, if you want to send uh, some message or data, you wait for it to connect. And then after it, you can use the send method to send data to a, another NKM address. And that's it, very simple. And on the unlike the receiving side, 
you just create a client and then you can use our message to, to get a, like a, a our message listener. You will be notified whenever a message is delivered or, or data is delivered to your client. So here is a minimal example using a JavaScript SDK. So the first line is a create multi-client and the second line is just send. Um, you just need to, so as a basic example, just need to provide a, another like recipient and can address and some message. It, it can be a string or it can be like byte data to, or you, you it uh, like array to send. And on the receiving, receiving side, you, you can use our message to add a like message listener uh, where you will know who sent the message and what's a payload and that's it. So it's pretty, it, it just took like three lines to get to start using LinkedIn SDK. And you can see that there's no uh, wallet thing involved. There's no token, no blockchain knowledge. It's just like a, a, a normal like uh, uh, networking SDK. Uh, and just to um, make you understand this better, so each NKN client has a client address. So the client address is in the most basic form, it's just a public key. Or if uh, it can also, uh, so each client can also have something called identifier. Identifier is just the arbitrary string you provide to the client to identify different clients using the same public key. If you, if you, if the public key is unique for each client, then it's probably not needed, but if you have multiple clients sharing the same key pair, then it would be very useful. So the, the NKN, like uh, the data transmission in NKN network is network agnostic. That means it doesn't change, um, the NKN address doesn't change when you change your like location of your device or IP address of your device. Actually, IP address is not some, it's something that is hidden in the NKN network. When using the SDK, you don't need to deal with uh, like IP address ever. So it, it, you just need to know like public key of sender and receiver, like, and kind of a, that's it. And it's pre, and it's a permanent address un, un, unless you change your key pair. So this address is used for both routing and encryption. And if you know about like man in the middle attack, using this like a shared, um, a, sh a shared address for routing and encryption can eliminate the possibility uh, of man in the middle attack because before you send a package, a packet, you already know what's the public key of the recipient, so that you can encrypt it immediately without ac actually like exchanging key pair and having the possibility of like getting a different public key. So when uh, so this this is a diagram on the on, on the bottom showing that how the packet is actually delivered. So when you create a client, it's actually connected to one of those 100,000 nodes in the network. And the same for the rece receiver side. When you send up, so th this uh, establishment from a client to node actually depends on your NKN client address. So without changing the client address, uh, you, will, uh, you will connect it to the same node in the network as long as the node topology in the network does not change. So when you send a uh, packet or message to the receiver, let's say X send a packet to Y, and the message will be delivered to the node it connected to first. And then because it knows what's a like recipient and can address, it should know what kind of node that client is connected to. And then it will use the routing algorithm to find uh, a path to deliver the packet to the node that is connected to why all the like receiver client, and then that node can deliver the packet to the receiver client. And so th this way you, because the connection is always made outbound from the client, you don't need to have any like public IP address or like port forwarding issue or something like that. Um, you just need to have internet. And same for the, even for the receiver who actually receives the packet, a connection is still made from the client to a node. So network part is not an issue. So apart from the NKN client, there is also something called NKN multi-client. So basically, as a NKN client is some lower level uh, like client, but NKN multi-client is probably what you will be using uh, even like directly. 
So basically, NCAN client, multi client encapsulate multiple uh, NCAN client as suggested by its name, multi client. It has almost the same API as a client. So it, the, 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 most, uh, the most different uh, part is just when you create it, you, did, you, didn't, you shouldn't call it new NCAN client, you just call it a new NCAN multi client. And after create a client, a multi client, it has basically has the same API exposed as the NCAN client. So it's kind of interchangeable in your in the application side. And what it uh, so the reason it encapsulates multiple NCAN clients is that it actually connected to multiple different nodes by having different NCAN clients. Using those uh, different nodes, you actually get different routing paths when you send a packet. And by doing this, you can have better latency, a lower latency, and uh, much higher reliability. Um, and also, you will multi-client support something called session mode, as we will talk about in the next slide. So uh, as because of these advant uh, advantages, uh, typically, we recommend you just to start with multi-client. Don't need to worry about the client. Just know it is there if you need, but typically, you don't need it. So next, let's talk about session. So the NKM message you, we have sent in the uh, previous like, example is kind of like UDP-like. So um, what this means is that although the chance is low, there is still a small chance that the packet is lost because the network can, 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 can not, there, can, there could be anything happening along the route, right? And the packet could be delivered out of order. That means if you, you can you may you may send the packet one two three and you receive it like two one three. It's it is very uh, it is like not common, but still there's a chance to for that to happen. And kind of similar to UDP, um, the the NK message has kind of a low latency compared to the session mode we're going to talk about. Because it doesn't need to, it, it will deliver the packet to the recipient whenever it's uh, whenever it's arrived, and also it has some uh, something like a, 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 we call offline cache. It's optional, but uh, it's kind of used. It's very useful if you want the packet to be delivered to a client that is not online currently. So after doing, if you um, add this parameter, enable this offline cache the message will be held on the node connecting to the client for like a period of time, depending on the parameters you choose, if the receiver client is not online. And it will wait for the receiver client to get online and then deliver that packet to the recipient and then remove it from cache. Uh, it will be used for, for some of the messaging app if you want to try to use NKM for, let's say, uh, to create instant messenger. So on the other hand, we have something called session. So session is more sorry. So session is more like a TCP in the NK network. Um, it has a guaranteed delivery as long as the connection is still alive, because it uh, under the hood it will use like auto resend and ACK like acknowledgement to to know which packet is delivered, which packet is not, and if it's not, it will resend it. And also it guarantees that order of the delivery. So the order of the uh, packet being received will always be the same as the uh, order being sent. It's kind of similar as TCP. And it has higher latency because when the like, out of order or like packet loss is uh, happened, um, you kind of need to wait for the pre uh, previous packet to be delivered first before you can deliver the, like, the later packet. So the, the latency will be higher than the, the, the like raw NK message. And also it needs to be it, it needs both parties to be online at the same time in order to send and receive the data. So there's no offline cache available for uh, for the session. So if you want to use a, uh, so uh, if you want to use a session, you have to use a multi-client. And the interface is pretty simple. On the sender side, you just dial session. Uh, by specifying the receiver's NKN client address, and then you will be notified when the session is a session is established. 
on the receiver side, you just use on session to listen for an uh, incoming session and you will be notified when a new session is available. And after the session is created, it has the same uh, interface as the like TCP connection and, and you can start using it. So this example is using JavaScript again. Uh, uh, but if you use Golang SDK, you will find that the session actually has the same inter interface as the like uh, the, the the TCP connection it it, it uh, like implements a net.com interface, and you can just replace the replace uh, any TCP connection with the session without changing any other part of the code. So uh, the last but not least part of the NTN SDK is the wallet. So the wallet is uh, is in charge for like on chain. Uh, operations such as like get get account balance or transfer token or subscribe to a topic, etc. You will typically not need it uh, during hackathon unless you are dealing with let's say a token or balance or any on chain stuff. If you're just just using like off chain data transmission, most likely you will be probably using client only, and there might be an exception as a subscribe. So um, each address can subscribe to a certain topic and in NK network. And on the client side, you can get a subscribers of a certain topic and uh, send a message to all those subscribers. This is called a publish. So together they, uh, they, they provide a pub sub uh, type, uh, like a, um, a feature. But uh, again, because this subscribe utilize on-chain uh, like transaction, uh, its throughput is limited by the transaction per second of the blockchain. So unless you uh, you are you, you don't have in, like um, scalability issue in the issue in the future, or kind of you just need to subscribe to very few topics, then you prop. So if you uh, if you have very limited on chain events, then you can probably use it. But if you use like if 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 you expect to have a large number of users. Or like a large number of events, you will probably want to stick with off-chain uh, only because that's kind of the only way to scale to let's say um, to millions of users or even billions of users. So here are some of the best practice that we um, uh, give to the uh, participants of the hackathon. So first of all, for the client, we recommend each client to have, uh, or each let's say each device to have a unique NK address. That means either it has a, a unique public key, or it has a unique identifier. So the ident identifier and public key combination should be better unique globally, because if there are multiple clients sharing the same uh, NK address, that means if they have the same identifier and the public key. And if uh, then what what if you send a packet to that or a message to that address, and only one of them will be only one of them is online, that online client will receive the message, and when the other client sharing the same address get online, it won't receive the message again. This may, this will make the like situation pretty complex because you have to deal with all those kind of possibilities and. It kind of uh, makes uh, makes things hard, so that's why we uh, we suggest like each device has a unique client uh, client address. So, for example, if you have a user that has the same key pair on a mobile device and on the uh, on his browser, you can use a different identifier to um, to to identify. They say the um, uh, different client for the same owner. And, and then they will have different NK address because of identifier. So this is for the client uh, for, for NK address part. And also an, another tip is that for NK clients, HTTP works better than HTTPS. This might sound strange, but HTTPS, if you know how it works, it's actually not very decentralized friendly. It has a lot of centralized component in its in its logic or architecture. So first of all, uh, a node needs to have a certificate which relies on the centralized uh, CA. 
this part is already centralized. And also a node needs to have some like a uh, privilege or uh, to in order to get that certificate. Uh, for example, it needs either needs to have a set up DNS record or it needs to have port 80 or 443 open, which requires root access. Um, so th these are not not like very uh, decentralized friendly to to miners. So not every NK node support uh, like has HTTPS certificate. It's kind of optim uh, like optional thing. And also for the like uh, resolving side, if you want to use HTTPS, you kind of need to have a domain which relies on the, uh, a centralized name server. And that's another like centralized point in the in this logic, and it's um, not very uh, like uh, decentralization friendly. Uh, for, for NKN, the HTTPS doesn't provide any additional uh, security because uh, we are uh, uh, because everything is already in end to end encrypted and public key is actually used as a part of the address. So HTTP, HTTP itself is uh, secure enough. So in all other SDK except for JavaScript, there is no HTTPS um, support at all. But for JavaScript, it's a bit different because in browser, if you want to use NKN client in the HTTPS environment, you have to use HTTPS. And uh, this makes things harder. So, uh, but luckily many nodes in NK network, not all of them, but many, many of them have HTTPS certificate. So that means even if you use client in the HTTPS environment, it should still work. It just have less node available to connect it to compared to HTTP environment. So this is not an issue if you're developing, let's say, um, uh, if you are using the JavaScript SDK to develop something like a desktop app, such as Electron, or like a mobile app, such as like React Native, or like a uh, or a browser extension. But if you want to use uh, develop a web app, this could uh, be something that you should keep in mind. And we suggest whenever possible, you debug and develop in, in HTTP environment just to separate these two issues. And if you have any issue with HTTPS, you kind of won't uh, mix it up with your application logic. So that's for the client side. So for, for HTTPS, in short, it still works, but uh, HTTP would be the best. So for the message part, yeah, the, the normal NKM message is basically at UDP-like. So it should have it has the same best practice as you would deal with any UDP application. So that means in the application level, you should tolerate a packet loss or out of order, although it's rare, but it's still uh, like possible. And another thing, if you use if you utilize the offline message cache. I should keep in mind that for the long period of time, it could be unreliable because it is an in-memory cache. If the if the node like get offline or restarted or like anything or the topology change or anything happen, those cached message could like disappear. So this uh, this is because the the cache is kind of not part of the incentive um, uh, logic. So the node actually do it for free or. Just provide some convenience without like uh, utilizing it much of its resources, so it so you can use it for a short term and or uh, as long as you don't assume it's like one hundred percent reliable. So the next uh, tip is for the session. The session is TCP like, which means that you should do basically the same thing as you do with TCP connections in your application. Um, so the, the tip we give is that you, if you use session and you should typically deal with like link status detection yourself, that means just like TCP connection, it's better you, you have some kind of ping pong logic in your application to, to, to detect when the connection is still alive or when it's disconnected or something. And it's better to have some read and write deadline as you do in the TCP connection. Uh, to detect the like uh, the connection issue as as soon as possible to give the best user experience. Okay, so that is a tip we give for using NKN SDK.
And the next, let's go through a few like uh, example applications uh, that is currently using NKN SDK. So the first one is a mobile. So a mobile is basically a decentralized instant messenger. And there's also something called DChat. is a it's using the same protocol, but it it is a community. Uh, it is like a browser plugin instead of a mobile app. They are they can talk to each other because they use the same uh, message protocol. And so a mobile is something that uh, like the that we developed uh, as a showcase um, instant messenger using NKN SDK. And so it is designed uh, from scratch uh, with decentralized uh, in mind, and it can. We, as a decentralized application, it has no backend, uh, no single point of failure. Uh, it has better security and scalability than like many other instant messenger because of the decentralized nature. But there's also something that is quite challengeable when they design it, such as the, the protocol, because if there's no server, it, the protocol itself needs to be more complex than the simple uh, like the uh, instant messenger with a server. And also because it's everything is on the client side, you'll probably notice that the, the environment is less controllable because there's no centralized server that can, let's say, control the same logic or the environment. Uh, we actually, uh, so in this uh, mobile, there's no centralized data storage or database. All the message history are stored on the like mobile side or client side. So um, this is also something that you probably want to do you, uh, yourself if you are uh, developing a decentralized application. So another uh, case that we are going to, uh, like we want to show is that is, is called NConnect. So NConnect is uh, basically a transparent end-to-end -end tunnel uh, using the like, NKN session as a transport uh, layer. So instead of using TCP connection, which requires a public IP address or port forwarding, we use NKN, uh, we use a session in the either NKN um, client or something called like a, a tuna session, uh, which is paid um, to, to provide the tunnel access, even if those two devices are not in the same local network and they are not, they don't have a public IP address or like not, they cannot connect to each other directly. So with the help of NKN tunnel, they can always connect to each other no matter where they are, and everything is like end-to-end -end encrypted with top level security. And also um, we like the, as a part of the session um, advantage, we have, we, we can utilize multiple uh, like different paths and aggregate their throughput to get a much, a much better connection speed. And uh, the third example I want to show is a uh, search. Sur Surge is basically a peer-to-peer -peer, like file share, uh, sharing app. So you can think of it as Bitcoin over NKN. Uh, it's 100% uh, anonymous and it, everything is end-to-end -end encrypted and it's pure uh, like 100% decentralized. Um, it's made by the it's made by the Rule 110 team. Uh, it's a uh, yeah it's a pretty uh, like ambitious and uh, uh, awesome like applications and. So yeah, all of these applications, uh, mobile and connect and search, they are open source on GitHub. And if you want to check it out or like uh, you, uh, see how they are like implemented, you are like welcome to take a look. So before we uh, let's see, before we stop, let's again like go through the bounty list just in case. Some of the audience was not in yesterday's uh, like session, so yeah, we provide like nine bounties in this hackathon. So um, the first one is a uh, NKN satellite miner. Um, it, it is for running NKN node uh, with uh, using a satellite the set, uh, or a space. Let's say let's take SpaceX as example. It's kind of like using NKN node over SpaceX or other satellite provider. And the second is an entire Rust SDK. So currently we don't have a Rust SDK yet, but we yeah we will definitely want um, want one. So the third one is uh, improved documentation for the NKN SDK. So if um, if you so yeah this is for people who want uh, who are more interested in documentation instead of like coding. Um, 
we are like uh, we are looking for a more detailed or more user developer friendly like tutorial or get started guide uh, for the Incan SDK, meaning for the JavaScript and uh, uh, Go SDK. But we also recently add Java SDK to this bounty as well. So the next one is Incan empowered metaverse. So many of the metaverse application uh, has like peer to peer communication as part of this feature. Uh, for example, some of the uh, metaverse uh, like uh, apps is kind of like a museum. Uh, each each user, or each player has its own museum or the room, and they kind of can go to other people's room. So this is a perfect model for NKN actually, um, because those all those kind of communication are peer to peer, and there's no need for like a a, cent a huge cent centralized server just to to handle the communication part. So we will we will like reward anyone who use NKN to 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 build either build a new metaverse app or integrate NKN to an existing metaverse app and use NKN as a like a uh, network layer for those peer to peer communication. And the next one is uh, code share for the, our NKN. So if you, I'm not sure if you have used codeshare.io. Yeah, it is um yeah, it is like a real time um, code share platform. So I can create a, a a code share room and share the link to other people. Anyone who join, uh, we, we can see this kind of a code uh, as one of them is modifying or adding. So it's kind of um, uh, very useful for uh, let's say an interview or like a team collaboration. And we actually use it a lot. Uh, so this is a code share is actually ideal model for NKN because it only has a very limited peer to peer communication in the network layer, and it's, it is perfect to use NKN SDK as part of a net uh, a, a communication uh, layer to, uh, to 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 transmit the latest state and the code update or something like that. So yeah. So we will be rewarding anyone who, who use NKN to build a like similar code share applications and, and use NKN as a transport layer or a communication layer. So similarly, in the next bounty, we have a, a whiteboard app for NKN. So uh, similar to the code sh uh, share app, it is very useful if we have a shared whiteboard among different members, right? We can, people can join the same room or let's say, and one of them can draw on the whiteboard and every, everyone else can see see the, the, the changes in real time. So this is very helpful in for remote uh, re remote work or remote collaboration if you want if you ever want to draw anything. And again, yeah, we are rewarding anyone who build uh, such a like application and use Inkin as a communication layer or network layer. The next bounty is a uh, video or audio conference app for NKN. So this can either be a new app or integrate uh, integrate into um, existing instant messenger such as a mobile or even other like instant messenger or, or similar app. Uh, you don't have to go video necessar necessarily if it is okay if it if it's a like audio only application. As long as it's using NKN as a network layer to transmit those like real time video or audio data, and we want to eliminate the like centralized server for this uh, uh, peer to peer video or audio chat. So the next one is open innovation app for NKN. So the previous example uh, of bounties are kind of uh, ideas that we have or we want to. Uh, that we, we we can think of for now, but I'm pretty sure that some of you might think of better ideas of how to use NKN SDK, how to build like even better uh, applications using NKN as like a network layer. So if so, then this bounty is for you. Uh, you are welcome to, to to come up with like any idea uh, using NKN SDK as like a network layer, and uh, um, yeah, uh, we will. So this bounty will have like more than one winner, actually like three winners, as you can see, you can see in the bounty details. And the last but not least one is create NKN NFT collections. 
Yeah, this is not a coding uh, bounty, but more like a related to NFT. Um, who for people who 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 wants to create or who who are interested in creating an NFT for the NKN um, theme, then this is this bounty is for you. Yeah, these are the nine bounties that we provide for this round of the hackathon, and every single one of them has like a much longer description on um, uh, Gitcoin and GitHub um, on our GitHub issue. And uh, please check it out before you uh, you start to make sure that you know all the details and requirements and anything like that. And uh, that's pretty much it. Yeah, uh, I think that's the uh, that's all I want to uh, talk about for today. And I will probably leave the rest of the time for questions, if you have any. Thank you, Lynn. Um, yeah, so if you do have any questions, please feel free to drop it in the chat or in the Q&A. Um, we'll take a look at that. And while people are thinking of their questions, um, is there a Discord or a Telegram group or a Slack group where people can reach out to developers for um, NKN that's best to get in contact with you and the team? Yes, definitely, definitely. Let me drop, uh, drop the link. Uh, you know, I also have the link as well. Oh, okay. I can do it. Uh, and also, I dropped a few links about the, the apps we discussed. Uh, so one of them are quite fun, the uh, dinosaur, uh, the uh, NK multiplayer T-Rex racing game. So even my son can play, and, uh, and normally he beats me as well. So that's a kind of pure application, lives on the browser and without any server. And, any two people can play, or any two devices can play. Okay, yeah, you can find the Discord link um, in the chat, and also a correction to the mobile link. Uh, awesome! So, Thank you so yeah. much. Uh, feel free to join our Discord, and there is a hackathon uh, channel in the Discord. You can like uh, post any hackathon-related issue or like questions there, and it's best to to tag a way of, a way of send anything it's best to tag uh, either me or boros whoever is more relevant uh, just to make sure we we, we won't miss a um, message awesome perfect um yes yeah, so that's the the discord link is in the chat and let me get the bounties hold on one second there we go. I just want to make sure I'm able to bring up all of the uh, NKA bounties so that people can um, find them pretty quickly. There we go. And it says, do you provide mentorship for hackathon projects? So, uh, I think that is a really good question. Um, I know that there are mentor, like people are available via Discord on the GetCoin channel, and I'm sure that with the NKN team, um, you would be available for people to reach out to you there. Um, yes. So, so, so Gloria, I think uh, uh, as we discussed before, and Elon and I will arrange kind of office hour on the Discord. So at least uh, during a particular period of time, we'll be always available. And the rest of the time, I think, like Elon said, if you tag me or Elon depend on the topic, and then we'll get back to you as soon as we can. So we are both based in the California time zone. So if there is some time lag, but also in our development community, lots of our developers are actually based in Europe and also some in China uh, or Asia. So I think even around the clock, other community developer will be able to help as well. Yeah, I think one of the best, uh, best things about hackathons is really getting kind of meshed within a community and getting a lot of your mentorship, not only from, you know, the teams that are, you know, there as sponsors, but also from the individuals that are participating. And a lot of times you can get answers to your questions within the Discord right away and learning um, peer to peer style uh, as well too. So uh, it would be nice in the future, again, like you said, those office hours, you know, for people to be able to reach out then. Um, but you have always been very quick to respond to me, so I can only expect the same for our participants as well, too. So um, take take uh, join the Discord that was dropped in the chat, 
Um, and that's the best way to connect. Let's see. Perfect. Uh, any other questions? If not, then I'm more than happy to give back time. Um, yeah, I think uh, yeah, we got, we're always happy to answer questions on Discord. So yeah, to save everybody 15 minutes, I think it will be valuable as well. Yeah. All right. Cool. So I, let me just check one more. Please. Okay. Perfect. There's. I don't see any other questions. So uh, other than that, everybody, we'll see you uh, next time during our next session. And best of luck uh, during the hackathon. Make sure you take a look at the bounties and start hacking. Bye, everybody. Okay. Thank you, Gloria. Bye, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you, Greece. Mm -hmm.